Good morning and praise the Lord, Church. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It is good to see some new faces. Amen. Amen. The CEO of Starbucks is here today. <laughs> Brother David. Appreciate you being here today. I'm sure we can get some discounts. <laughs> shout out right now. Uh, last year, can anybody tell me what we, uh, what our message was about last year? I'm going to have to do better this year so that we can remember. Amen. Amen. Oh, was it the mom that, that stayed with the, oh, yeah. the child, wasn't it? Uh, that was the girls and all that, wasn't it? No, but that's a good one. <laughs> The title was uh, Egypt had you, but your mother nursed you. She remembered once I got going. Uh, and uh, I, I say a shout out because every Mother's Day, I, I'm trying to find something that's appropriate. And for the first time, I've struggled. I struggled. And I felt like God was telling me, it's not going to be like that this year. And if you didn't listen to that message, go back to May of last year and listen to it. I listened to it yesterday. I guess I never listened to it before. But there is an incredible message Amen. in what we preached last year. Yes. I believe it was May 6th or 5th of last year that we, that we had that Mother's Day. I can't remember exactly, but go back. And, and listen to that. And briefly, it's about the, the, the mothers that never really had a chance to be a mother. Because maybe they weren't living right. Maybe they weren't doing right, thinking right, being right. And there's a whole message in that. Because of God's mercy and His grace. Because anybody can begin to be a mother when God steps into the picture. The mother that he ordained from the beginning uh, of time. It's a great message. I, I, if you find time, go back and, and listen to it. It's in the archives, May of 21. Uh, amen? amen? All right. Uh, we're going to do something a little different, like I said this morning. And uh, I'll tell you my thought process in it is that I could go through the Bible, and I did, and I could talk about Esther today, uh, I could talk about uh, Ruth, I could talk about Mary, I could talk about Hannah, there's many people that I could talk about today and make a story Amen. and a lesson out of it, but I really felt God was talking to me about how the Bible is still being written. Right. It is. Because they made disciples of us to go into all the world. That's, that's us today. And, and I thought I could, I, could, I could give another sermon like last year or the previous year about mothers. But what about the mothers of 2021, 22? These mothers. Amen. Because there's some tremendous stories in these pews Amen. about mothers that could help as much as Hannah, Ruth, or Mary, or any of the other ladies in the Bible. Amen. Amen. Uh, amen. We're walking epistles. Right. There's stories to be told. 
testimonies. You got one tearing up already. We're going to pray in just a second before we get started. And when we do, I just want you to close your eyes. Oh, yes. One of the greatest things we could ever do is when we begin to pray is just to close your eyes. Amen. And just think back on things. And I promise you, if you do that and you see God right now in that prayer, some of you might well up and drop a tear. It's a special day today. And I just want everybody to know how special mothers are. Amen. 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 It's good to see Sister Lynette, Amen. Brother Howard, and the family in the church today. Amen. Amen. It's good to see all of you. Yes. I love that. All right. Uh, let's, let's, let's pray right now. Let's just close our eyes and lift our spirit up. Uh, regardless of how we feel right now, God's in a place right now where he can lift you. Yes, amen. Amen. Father, we thank you. Yes, Lord. We thank you for this day. We thank you for the opportunity that you set before us today, God. Yes, God. Yes. Amen. I know, God, you're you're with each and every mother today and every family here today. Thank you, Lord. And I know that you ordained the very ones that are sitting here in the pews, God. You saw them from afar off. asking you right now, God, if you would, please enter into the hearts and the minds of everyone here today, God, but especially the mothers, that you would lift them up in spirit, God, that you would lift them up in their hearts, that you would open doors that have never been opened and opportunities that have never been seen for them, God, that when they leave here, they would know that there's a purpose that you're working, God, that you're always working yes. in circumstances. I thank you for lifting those up today and bringing them here today, God. I thank you for all the visitors that are here today, God. Amen. And I thank you for all the children of the mothers that are yes. representatives yes. of their mothers today. I'm deeply thankful and grateful for that. Father, be with us today. Touch your people's hearts. Let them see things they've never seen and hear things they've never heard. Help us to understand and see the need of the hour. Yes, Lord. And we pray this, God, in the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody said amen. 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 All right. We're going to start a little different today. And uh, Sister Corinne. Uh, has something she wants to talk about this morning. Uh, I believe we're going to do one song, take up an offering, and then we'll come up and open up the service, which is different than we normally do. And uh, just let God have his way. Nothing here today is reversed. Nothing is thought of. It's just going to go the way the Lord wants it to go today. And that's what I've told all week. Amen? Amen. 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 All right. Sister Chris, can you come up here for me? I know she doesn't like this, no. <laughs> but we can't help but celebrate Sister Chris. Amen. She always has no. <laughs> she always has a kind word and a warm hug for everybody. That's right. And I thank God for her every day because I'm so glad that she's my pastor's wife. Amen. So I have this for you to put on a shelf somewhere, and here's a card from all of us. And happy Mother's Day. Amen. Here we 
can you get, I, I feel like the Lord just give me a little something. Get 1 Samuel. Chapter 1, verse 1, and we'll go to like uh, verse 6. Can you get that up there? First Samuel, chapter 1, verse 1. I love how when nothing's rehearsed that, that you're being led of the Spirit and that God can do what He wants to do without man getting in the way. Amen? Right. to me something and it's in this passage. Now there was a certain man of Ramathaim Zophim of Mount Ephraim and his name was Elkanah the son of Jeroham the son of Elihu the son of Tohu the son of Zuth and a Prakite. Next verse. And he had two wives. The name of the one was Hannah. And the name of the other one was Penina. And Penina had children. But Hannah had no children. And this man wept out of his city yearly. To worship and to sacrifice unto the Lord of hosts in Shiloh. And the two sons of Eli. Hophni and Peneus, the priests of the Lord, were there. And when the time was that Elkanah offered, he gave to Penina his wife, and to all her sons and her daughters portions. But unto Hannah he gave a worthy portion, for he loved Hannah. But the Lord had shut up her womb. And her adversary, the, the adversary always wants to provoke. He always wants to get into your mind and tell you how he'd like it to be. And he'll mess with you. And her adversary also provoked her sword. Her problem for to make her fret. That's what he wants to do. Right. Can I just tell you right now, all the things that we worry about, 99% of them never happen. But we fret and worry about all of them. And they never happen. They never come to fruition. Never. Because the Lord had shut up her womb. Whatever the circumstances that you may be in right now, trial, trouble, tribulation, problems, whatever they are. Maybe you're seeking for something and you just haven't found it. And you're tired of searching. The adversary will want you to fret over it. But I'm telling you, God hears every prayer. He sees every soul in every movement. Don't think that you can take a step without him notice, not noticing he notices everything. You can hide from your brother, your sister, your pastor, but you can't hide from God. Right. right. Amen. And as he did so year by year, when she went up to the house of the Lord, so she provoked her. Therefore, she wept and did not eat. See, sometimes when you're fretting and worried and sick, you, you don't feel like eating. Maybe somebody in your family has passed recently, and it just makes you so sick. Nothing feels good. Nobody can come to you and lift you up. You don't want to hear it. Nobody will ever say the right thing. They'll never say what you want them to say. But maybe sometimes what you want them to say isn't even what they should say. And said Elkanah her husband to her Hannah why weepest thou and why eatest thou not 
And why is thy heart grieved? Am I not better to thee than ten sons? So Hannah rose up after they had eaten in Shiloh, and after they had drunk. Now Eli the priest sat upon a seat by a post of the temple of the Lord. And she was in bitterness of soul. We can be bitter about a lot of things. And we'll lay and weep in our bitterness and, and, and cry out sometimes to our friends, our co-workers, parents, mothers. And prayed unto the Lord and wept sore. That, that's good enough right there. Here's, here's what the Lord spoke to me. Just now. Sometimes. In a hurting circumstance. Or in bitterness. Or in trial. We want help. And Elkanah was really looking at how she wasn't eating. How she was in bitterness. And he tried to help her. And as you read the story, he can encourage her to start eating. I'm bringing you double portions. Start eating. He's trying to give her advice, kind of like the, 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 uh, in Job, the story of the three friends. They all have something to tell Job that is going to get him up off his feet until Elihu shows up and then tells him how it really is. Here's what the Lord told me. Sometimes, most of the time, and because it's Mother's Day, we'll use that as an example, but it's for everybody today. Sometimes mothers don't need advice. Sometimes they don't even need encouragement, even in the trial. This is what they need. Sometimes they just need somebody to listen. Just to be a good listener. Not advisor. I'll tell you what I do. No, none of that. Just listen to the mother's needs. Just listen. Lend an ear. say nothing. They can talk for 40 minutes without you saying a word. Just nod your head. That's all they want. Feed them, encourage them. None of that. Is, they just want somebody to listen. That's all. Amen? Amen. Amen. Kind of got off track, but that was not me. Amen. Let's worship. Let's stand up. Lift up your hands to God. Amen. Yes. Just a, a simple lifting of the hand. Can I tell you something? When you lift, it's acknowledging. Oh, yes. Amen. Amen. It is a surrendering. Yes. It, 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 listen, what could we ever give God? What, what good could we ever give God? What could we give Him? He don't need houses. He don't need mansions. He don't need money. He don't need anything. But he created us to worship him. Amen. That's the only good thing that we could give God. It's just to lift our hands and say, God, have your way. Talk to me today. Yes. Be with me today. Encourage me, Lord. Amen. I'm looking up to the heavens. I'm not looking oh, down. Yes. I'm not looking to the left. I'm not looking to the And I'm sure not going to look back, Lord. Amen. I'm looking up to the heavens, to the maker, the creator of the universe and all things. Because there is no name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. He'll pull you off, saints. Just lift your hands. Just acknowledge him. That's the only thing we could ever give him. That he would want from us. Can we do that? Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Worship. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. If we could have uh, Brother Gabe come up here at this time, and Brother Miles. Amen. Brother Cook's going to close out our service today with uh, a little story about a mother. somebody to do something and I would always be alert until I knew that they started to walk through the aisles of the chairs and I would look at her or him until they got close and then I'd look down <laughs> don't pick me don't pick me please don't pick me you know what I mean so we're just going to go that way today find somebody not looking at me. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Chris, come on up here and sit down. <laughs> Be here. 
But I long to see her, to tell her I love her. I think about all the things that mom ever did for me. I was thinking about them the last couple of days. And there's a lot of them I could talk about. Tremendous, incredible things. And I thought, you know what? We're going to write some Bible today. We're not adding to the Bible, don't, for those of you that are theologians. We're not adding to it. But we are a script. And he's coming back. And we are disciples. And we are his children. We are his sons and his daughters. And one day going to be the bride of Christ. Amen? Amen. So, I thought, Ariel, I'm sure. What are you now, like 40? <laughs> She's like 30, right? Yeah. And I know there's probably some memories uh, in her that she could share with us that maybe would encourage you or just encourage mom. Maybe even encourage Ariel today as uh, she gets to say a few words about her mom on this special day. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Um, okay, well, uh, I love my mom. She is a wonderful human being. Um, she's probably one of the most patient, humble people um, that I've got to encounter in my life. Um, <laughs> growing up, um, she was a stay-at-home mom, which I am so thankful for. Um, you did a really good job with us. Um, <laughs> My mom don't know how to get angry. Um, she just she just don't. Um, but that's one of the things that I admire about you, mom. Is even with the kids, we would do everything we could to make her mad, and we would just go crazy, do everything we weren't supposed to do. And you know, my mom would yell at us, and we're like, oh, all right, well, mom looks mad. Let's we'll stop, guys. You know, kind of thing, because we felt bad for her. <laughs> she had to use, okay, well, I'm gonna go get dad, and then that's when things really got serious. So, you know, I'll run out the door. <laughs> The mom was too nice, but um, my mom is one of the most selfless, loving, kind people that I know, and I am so glad that I am your daughter, and I got that somewhere deep down inside of me, <laughs> but I look up to you, mom. I love you very much. I appreciate everything that you do. Nothing goes unnoticed. I wish I could give you more, but I can't but I love you so, so much. And you are a great example of what a woman of God should be. Um, she goes unnoticed sometimes because she's so quiet, but she's a wonderful human being. Um, but I love you. Amen. 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 All right, you're dismissed in Jesus' name. I'm going to have to walk the aisle again. <laughs> this could go quick, thanks. Yeah. I, I, I'll ask for a volunteer first. Uh, can I get a mother that would like to volunteer to come up and sit? All right, here I go. All right. Have a seat. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Listen, I uh, Diane's been coming here for about a year and a half, maybe a year I think it's been actually about a year, about a year. <laughs> and uh, we only know enough about Diane because we haven't known her very much, but we only know what she opens up and shares with us. Okay, and uh, I know her family. Uh, some of her family I went to school with. And uh, I do know this, that God gave her the opportunity to bear children. Uh, what a blessing that is in itself. Amen. Amen. Uh, and I do know this, that she loves her kids because she talks about her kids sometimes to me and uh, how she misses them. And she talks about her husband and how he, she misses him. Uh, there's a love inside of Diana that I have seen in the last year since she's been here. Uh, and I love that uh, church and friends and fellowship can bring some of that out. And uh, 
I don't have anything bad to say about Diana. Uh, I don't need to know her past. I just need to know about her future with God. Amen. And, uh, I'm thankful that she's in this church. Uh, I always greet her with a little hug and, uh, you know, praise the Lord. And she always responds. Uh, and I love that when you can say praise the Lord to somebody and they can respond back with the same thing. Amen. 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 Uh, I just want to tell you, Diana, we love you. Yep. Appreciate Amen. you. Amen. Appreciate Amen. your giving, your offering, yeah. your time, and your presence. Amen. 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 In the name of Jesus. We're dismissed. Second great grandchild, and I've been having you guys pray. She's coming home Tuesday. Amen. Amen. How awesome is that? Amen. 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 Okay, I'm going to go backwards this time. Brother Gabe, come on up here. Now, if anybody knows where his mother is, Lynette is looking at me like, Brother, I see it right now. Brother, brother, come on up, Lynette, and have a seat. You want to sit there? Right. This is a special guy right here. Amen. Uh, some would tell you, and I know. That God has uh, intervened in his future and his life. Yes. And he's extremely special. And I've known him since he was about three or four, right? Uh, I've known him a while. How old are you, Gabe? Oh, 13. 13. Yeah, I've known him that long. I, I, uh, I've been at the church there for 12 years, so I've known him since he was just a little, a little guy. And I look at the pictures that Mom posts online, and I think, wow, he's like taller than me. Right. Like, man, they make them big now. It's a different kind of vitamin D in the milk. <laughs> but uh, I talked to Gabe yesterday for just a few minutes, and uh, he's got a little something he wants to say about Mom on Mother's Day. Just a little special Amen. something. Amen. 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 God bless you. Uh, I just want to say that I'm really thankful for my mom and that God brought her, that God brought her into the world for me, and that um, uh, I'm just, uh, just I'm really thankful for her and how she takes care of me and how she raised me to be, a, and for my future. I just want, I just want to thank God for how thankful I am for her. Amen. 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 I'll be the last one to go to say something about my mom. But he just reminded me of something. Um, Brother Miles, come on up here. If anybody sees his mom, you can point her out. Come on up here, sister. Come on up here. There was a time when I would ask Miles to do something in church, and he'd, he'd go up there. <laughs> Today, uh, I said, hey, Miles, how would you like to? He's like, okay. It's a grow. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I just want to say that I'm glad that she's doing her best. <laughs> you know, that all it means for staying here till about 4 p.m. <laughs> And also, she does her best. Uh, she gets me extra stuff sometimes, even when she shouldn't. <laughs> and she's just a good mother. Amen. 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 Yeah. He, he says she gets me stuff even when she shouldn't. Does that sound like our yeah. Heavenly Father? Yeah. Does that sound like His mercy yeah. and His grace? The undeserving. Uh, you know, mercy that he bestows upon us uh, every day. It's, uh, 
It's quite a beautiful thing. Yes. It is. I need Sister Melody and Brother Ben. Come on up here. Amen. Ben's been dying to speak in this year. He's dying to preach in this And how about Mom? Come on up here. This is what I meant by we're still writing about our mothers. Amen. Uh, there's a need to talk about our mothers today because the struggles that we have today are not like they had then. They're different. They're important. And uh, I just appreciate this. I'll let the ladies go first. Okay. Uh, well, let's see. Um, I She loves her twice. Amen. What can I say about my mom? Um, it, I, I mean, like my sister said, you know, we kind of came in disagreement and stuff. And uh, I mean, a lot of times, I, 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 you know, it's you know my fault. But even through that, she puts up with me, and <laughs> and I know it's just because you know. Spirit of God in her, and she, you know, raised me and my sister and my brother. I mean, well, unfortunately, he kind of strayed, but, um, and, and, you know, in the truth, and that I just saw faith, and I'm just, I'm so grateful for that. Amen. 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 And, I mean, even when, you know, I, I strayed every now and then, I, I would always come back. Because, you know, I, I knew in my heart, you know, what the truth was, you know, how real God was, and, yeah. Um, it was just a huge thing, and just went to my mama, you know. I love her so much, thank you very much. Amen. 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 Because they're like family here in the church. Uh, I occasionally get calls, you know, Pastor, I need you to talk to me. Pastor, I need you. But that's the mother who wants to hold everything together. Amen. 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 The word mother in the Bible, in Strong's definition, means the bond of the family. The glue, the, the mortar, the cement, the, it's what holds family together. Amen. That's what it means in the Bible. When you get into the New Testament, it has a different meaning. You no longer see that meaning in it. But in the New Testament, you'll see the word mother, and guess what it means? Mother. The dictionary defines mother in the verb sense to bring up with care and affection. There is nobody, listen to me, there is nobody that cares more for you than your mother, kids. Amen. Amen. Nobody. Not your boyfriend, not your husband. Nobody cares more for you than your mother. Right. God created them special. Created by God. God created mothers, the Bible says, in his image. On the sixth day, the Bible says that he created mothers. Before it was all said and done, before he rested, he created her. Amen? Amen. He looked around at all the goodness that he had created. 
all of it, heavens, stars, the moon, that he had already brought forth. He looked at all of it, and he realized he had one more handcrafted creation left to bring forth. Just one thing left to do. And I can imagine that he stood quietly on that balcony of space, deep in thought, molding in his mind the perfect caregiver. So with his incredible mind, he began to create the most incredible and the most beautiful creature who would never meet her match because she's perfect. There's none that compare to her. Golden is her heart. Her arms are crafted with heavenly strength. I remember in, in, when my kids were born, I could hold my son and my daughters for five minutes and I'd say, Mom, you got to take her. She's killing me. But they, they, they got like the special thing on their hip. <laughs> You know, I don't know how they do it, but my hip don't do that. Where this incredible strength is given to them where they can hold these children for hours. And I, I, I look back now and I think, man, oh, God, you're good. You really handcrafted this one perfect. Uh, you know, the, their love has no limits. Miles said, Mom gives me things when really saying that I didn't deserve it. I shouldn't get what she gives me. Out of love. Amen. You ever notice that when, uh, when, when, you, when you were children, I'm talking to the moms now, that the baby would fall and cry and they'd come running to the parents. They never went to the dad. They always went to the mother because there's some kind of a connection. They knew that mama was going to kiss the boo-boo and hug them and hold them and dad wasn't going to do that. He wants to make them tough. You know, don't you know I walk to school every day? In the snow. You ever notice the dog in the snow? I walk to school. Back and forth. Five days a week. You know, but the mother, she grabs a hold of them and, and loves them and cares for them and uh, kisses boo-boos and, and is always full of uh, unconditional love. There's nothing you can do to make your mom. It might be momentarily or temporarily you get upset at mom. But I'm telling you, you can't help but love your mom when it's all said and done. Uh, they truly love like Jesus. That's really what I'm trying to say. Because they were created in the image and likeness of yeah. him. You know, the Bible says that when he created man, he wasn't talking just about man. That word actually means mankind. Right. Men and women. He created them that way. So they, they, hand, they handle pain like no other person. And I can mean emotionally or physically. They handle pain incredible. Uh, I cough once and I'm headed to the hospital and I'm hurting. And my wife has told me before, you're asking me for the clicker and it's laying on the table right beside you. And she'd get up and get me the clicker because I'm sick. They can handle pain. Incredible pain. Emotional pain. Do. They're tough, that's what I'm saying. Uh, whether they are sick, they still can perform all the duties of a mother. You know what I'm saying? I remember yeah. our kids as they were growing up, uh, and I would say, Hon, the baby's crying. And now I think she should have said, well, hun, if you heard her first, you ought to know. <laughs> they would always get up, and Mike's used to say, oh, honey, i got to work in the morning. And she'd get up, and she'd say, well, i got to work too, <laughs> You know, and she'd get up and go, go comfort the, the love of a mother and how far they would go to perform the duties of a mother. Right? Uh, they, they could go on and on and on. The mother gives comfort and compassion. And it's actually shown throughout the whole Bible the love and compassion of mothers. Amen? Amen. And I just wanted to I wanted you to see some things that children think of their mothers. And uh, I'm not done. I think there's something more in here I could do. Uh, chair's still there? Yeah. All right. How about Megan? Come on up here. I love this. She didn't flinch. She just said, okay. Coming up. 
And I know where her mom is, so. Where? Come on up, Mom. <laughs> she said, I remembered something. So I was sitting there. I wasn't texting. <laughs> she knows the phone shouldn't be on it. I thought that was kind of neat. Uh, they've been here for about... Uh, well, I, I should say this. I've known them for almost two years, I think. We really have sat down and tried to figure this out. We really can't. Um, but I've known them for a little while. And because of Megan's health and how well she's doing now, we see them at church, even see them in Bible studies. Uh, and Megan even comes sometimes on prayer. Amen. So uh, I love that what God has done with this family. And yes. uh, I, I'm just thankful for that. So uh, they've been here for two years, although you may not have seen them every time, all the time. Uh, this is a miracle. Right. Yes. And uh, we sometimes will forget about, uh, you know, the miracles that God has done in our life. And there's a miracle sitting in that chair right there. Right. Yeah. Uh, right. I, I have seen this family, and uh, you talk about a sacrifice. You talk about For some of us, it's hard to give up a day for somebody. Could you go pray? Well, I have this to do. This mother has given up her whole life. Right. Her whole life. Right. Over a decade. You talk about a tremendous love. Amen. Love heals. Amen. Love conquers, love wins. Yes, amen. God loves love. Amen. Amen. Here we go. Speak into that thing. Amen. Um, um, I don't really know if I need the mic. Yeah, you do. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, I, I'm not going to go into any details whatsoever, but since my mom was. 19 even she has had the hardest life if you will ever 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 let anybody know that and she doesn't you see me I mean she's got a lot beautiful lot she's sacrificing a lot to take care of me you know that just happened in like the last five years everything else happened way before that and I have absolutely no idea how, how she even lived. Uh, I don't think I could have lived through what she's, she's gone through. So she's a huge, huge inspiration to me. Amen. And um, it's funny because, and I was going to tell you to do this, but I forgot. Um, the other day, I was with Alex and we took a picture. You remember when he took that picture of the sky? Yeah. Yeah. And he, what did he see first? Um, a face. A face. So Alex <laughs> took a picture the other day, and he saw a face. But then I took the, we took this pen out, and I circled it like five things. Yeah. yeah. Like five things that were in the, the, the sky and that were super obvious to me, but I didn't know if he saw it. He just saw a face. But what we saw was, when I circled everything, depth. Like there it is. And on top of it was like Jesus. Mm -hmm. Am I right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, so that was one thing that we saw. Then on the other side, I said, this is like a lion that has his claw out, you know. He's worn, he's got big mane, he's angry. And the bottom of that picture, right below that, was a little girl on her knees going like that. Praying, yeah. And that alone was how many years ago? Two? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that strengthened my faith so much more and made me, re made me realize that God's going to be here real soon. Amen. Amen. And you gotta get things right. Amen. And Amen. I had not been right for a long time because of 
medication, everything, and it's put such a toll on the relationship between her and I, it's hard for her to be a mom and a doctor, wow. you know, and a friend. Mm -hmm. But she still somehow manages to balance everything. Yeah. And it's just, it's, it's amazing. She's definitely an inspiration to me, that's for sure. Amen. Amen. Quite a story Amen. Um, and quite a miracle right here. Amen. Amen. For those of you that don't know, when Megan came in here, she needed all kinds of help. She had a blanket, a pillow. She couldn't sit up. She couldn't walk. She laid in this pew right here. And it, this miracle, every miracle has a genealogy. And when you trace the miracles back, they all lend to somebody's prayer that prayed a prayer. That's where they're all birthed. A prayer. She got baptized. Then she got filled with the Holy Ghost, and God began to do a work in her, uh, in, in a disease that nobody that's living on earth with what she had is surviving without shunts in their heads and in their bodies to make fluid. She is, though. That's the hand of Amen. God Amen. and love. The love of a church, the love of the people here, the brothers Amen. and sisters, the love of everyone that's involved in it. And I like what she shared about uh, Angie. Uh, I love them, man. They're seriously their family to me. Amen. And uh, I, I love that. Thank you. All right, who else did I miss? Anybody else has got a mother and a daughter here? Rose. And Landon's not here today, but Brother Kenny, I'm sure you can lend. Come on up here, Rose. She's a mother. She's a wonderful mother. Y'all are. Amen. Come on up here, Rose. You, you're, you're in the house. You see the motherhood in her share. Tell us something good. Oh, Rose. <laughs> awesome. Um, very caring. Very wonderful mother. I mean, does everything. Does everything. When I'm too late to get up, she's going to be in the corner. You know what I mean? She shows me up. I mean, um, <laughs> she's not, you know, she's not only a mother, but I mean, she's a protector. I mean, when, when I'm mad, she runs with her. You know what I mean? So, uh, I mean, she's, uh, there's so much I can say about Rose. The thing she does for Land and Land is, Land has been, uh, he just, uh, everybody knows he's a little bit uh, a tit dick, and uh, so he has a little fits, you know, here and there all the time. And um, she's just very understanding when it comes to that. I get, I get a little bit um, impatient, you know what I mean? I, I'm very impatient. Um, I still gotta work on that. But, but, but she, she just loves him so much, and she's so caring, mm -hmm. does so much for him. I mean, uh, she just, She's the most wonderful person I know, most wonderful mother I know, besides my own, of course. <laughs> my mom my mother is so wonderful. I mean, um, and I see a lot of um, Rose, you know, between my mom and Rose, I mean, because my mom said so much for me, you wouldn't even believe what I put her through. But um, I see that, I see that in Rose. She's gonna give a shit off her back for her, for her son. She's gotta do anything she can for him. She got to show die for him if needed. Um, I know these things. Um, but her own children, her own children don't even cover over kids, don't even talk to her. And she still don't stop loving them. She still Amen. reaches out to them. Yeah. When, when I'm not saying nobody deserves to be deserted, but they don't deserve the love that she, she still, she still gives it up. You know what I mean? Yeah. You treat her so badly. You know what I mean? And uh, she don't deserve that because she's so wonderful. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. She yeah. loves them. She loves them just as much as she loves Landon. Yeah. And they can't see that. You know, it's 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 definitely it's it's uh 
a loved one is she can give them yeah. because there's nobody gonna do that for them. I mean, it's it's a uh, it's a special kind of love, the only she can give. And uh, I love her to death. Amen. And I thank God for her. Amen. Amen. She she really does love uh, like uh, burden type love for people. Amen. Uh, I've seen her in prayer and travail, and uh, there's a deep love of God that's inside of her uh, that God has given her. And everything that we've talked about today, I, I just wanted to point out how much there is a likeness and their comfort and their compassion that God has in him for us. He put it in mothers more so than he did fathers, not taking anything away from dad, but there's something special, extra special uh, about a mother. Sister, come on up here. Now, you don't have kids here today, but I know I've got a few sisters that could say some neat things about her. Errol, you come up here and Sister Corinne. Sister by Jay Bowen's is really sweet. Um, every time I talk to her, she's always so nice and she's always showing me pictures. <laughs> which I really like because I've seen the pictures of her wedding. She had a really nice wedding. Um, but she really loves her husband and loves her kids. And you know, it's it's so nice to see that somebody that really, really is in a good relationship and loves her husband the way she does. Amen. And I not in a relationship, but hopefully if I ever get into one, I'll have one like she has. And she is a blessing to this church. She helps out a lot, you know. Like today, she helped out with the music department and helped write out words. And so, she always has a kind word, and she always, you know, is really always nice when you talk to her. So, Amen. Amen. I love Sister Becky. <laughs> um, she is a woman after God's heart. Um, she, I have noticed you are, uh, you surrender to God, you submit to him um, in every way. If you find out, you read something in the Bible and you've got a question about it and you, you kind of, you know, should I be doing this? Should I not? I mean, right away she stops. I mean, she just wants to obey God and that's all she wants to do. Um, that's a great example for the ladies. Um, I admire that about you, Sister Becky. And with the music, even though, um, she has a desire to do the music with everybody, um, and she's finishing up and going through her Bible study um, that's required. She's Holy Ghost filled, baptized in Jesus' name, and she doesn't have to come to these practices, but she does anyways, and she is still makes herself a part of everything within the music ministry, even though she doesn't have to. She's hungry for God. Um, it's awesome to see. It's encouraging to see, Amen. so it's Amen. awesome to be a part of that. Amen. <laughs> Sister Cook, come here. And Chris, you come up here too. These two are like two little peas in a box. I never expected this. She said, I never expected this. I love my sister so much. She's so sweet and quiet. She's quiet like me. <laughs> I appreciate everything she always does for me. She spends time with me, makes me feel better when I'm not well, kind of sad. <laughs> and she treats me like her, like a daughter, like a, a best friend. And to tell you, to be honest, I've never really had a best friend. <laughs> and I'm so happy I got you. I get all flustered. I'm sorry. <laughs> I love spending time with you, sister. I really do. I'm glad you're in my life. <laughs> You help me, you know, you encourage me, you know, in the Lord, and I need to work harder, and I think we can do it together. <laughs> Amen. Amen. because this is kind of a different uh, circumstance. Uh, 
she does have kids. They're not here today, but she has a strong desire that the Lord would move in their life. Amen. And uh, the reason I say it's, it's different and is because uh, she has a granddaughter, Addie. She's downstairs right now. But that's her mother right here because Addie yeah. lost her mother and yeah. her father. So her role is different. Uh, but she's a strong woman. I've had times that I've got to sit down with her and talk. and She has a real heart. Uh, she has a heart for God, and uh, she has a love for God and the Word, and she tries really hard, uh, and it's hard living by yourself Try to push through on your own. Uh, Becca does the same thing. Uh, you know, uh, Becca would say, I don't have a man, it's just me, you know. Uh, God made you strong in all areas, you know. And uh, this is a strong woman right here, and uh, I'm sure that... Uh, Sister Corinne would have something good to say about her. Come on up here, sis. You guys don't know this my soul sister right here. I love her to death. Um, seems like we're yeah, kind of knitted together. We're both single parents, and we're both making it not on our own, but with Jesus. Um, and matter of fact, um, I was telling somebody earlier yesterday, I was thinking, you know, I was walking out of the bank and I was thinking to myself, you know, I'm making this on my own, but then I thought, I'm not. I have Jesus with me. Amen. So Amen. just remember that, sister, when times get hard, <coughs> you are not alone. Amen. Right. You Amen. have Jesus with you. I don't know. Yeah, he provides for me. He's going to provide. Yes, he will. Amen. He really does. Amen. Just like he provides for all of us. <coughs> and I, I'm so thankful for her because she is such an awesome lady she always has a word and it's funny because sometimes she'll come to me with stuff and it's exactly what i need and the same goes for me i'll do it for her too and that's a great thing to have in the church somebody you know that kind of has your back and i'm just so thankful for her to be in this church and i'm so thankful for her just for her <laughs> amen <laughs> Now, did I, I didn't leave anybody out, did I? We have a visitor, and I, I won't ask you unless you want to. I would love for you to be able to come up, and uh, maybe you can tell me. She's a stepmom, uh, and that's that's different uh, than anybody else. Um, I'll just share something with the church about. Is that okay? Okay. Uh, she came to a dinner that we had here uh, a couple months ago, and I had an interesting conversation with her. She was searching for truth. Amen. And the service that we had that day was really peculiar and different because I normally don't preach like I did that day, but something moved me that day. So she got a taste of a Pentecostal blessing, apostolic, whatever you want to call it that, it was different. And uh, after the service, I talked to her a little bit. I really felt like she was going to come back and visit us again. And she did. And I thought, man, Lord. That's probably all my fault. But I got caught up in the spirit, and uh, I don't even remember what I preached, but it was different. And I thought, I'll be honest, I'm transparent. I thought, man, I scared her. <laughs> I know I did. I thought, Lord, why'd you move me like that? And, and no, she never come back. And uh, I'm being honest, that's just how I felt, because I thought, you know, I'm Bible-based. I, I, I want people to learn, and she came searching for truth. What she got was a party that day it was it was uh we don't have i told her after i said we normally don't freeze like that we normally but uh, it was different and uh, i didn't hear from her for a couple of months and then you know we kind of communicated a little bit i didn't even know that uh, 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 uh friends on facebook i didn't realize who she was uh until i got a text one day and she's still searching for truth and that's what yeah. i love is that she wants truth yeah. and uh yeah. she shared something with me and I hope you didn't mind. He didn't tell me I couldn't share. It's, it's pretty simple. But uh, she said, uh, I want to live fearlessly for the Lord. Amen. And I want truth. And I want knowledge. I want to be held accountable. Because I have never felt fearless in the Lord about my salvation. 
thought at that moment, God, you truly sent somebody here hungry Amen. for Amen. truth. Amen. Amen. And I'm really grateful that she's that hungry yes. for this. Yes. Because I am telling you, you are going to get fed and you're going to get so full yes. that one day teachers that teach people are going to be teachers. I believe that right. with all my heart. And you know we're we're not a big church on a, a church on a great Sunday. We got fifty, and I believe that God has set her here for for something in the future to be used of God fearlessly, full of understanding and full of truth and knowledge. That when you speak, no world is going to impact you. No other denominational, non-denominational is going to be able to stand before truth. Truth is truth, and I'll always Amen. stand on truth. The Bible says, buy the truth and sell it not. Amen. Amen. So I believe that's uh, I believe that's in store for her. Thank you for being here. Amen. And happy Stepmother's Day. Amen. 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 Uh, go ahead, bro. I have something to say. All right. His wife's downstairs with his mother. So it's awesome. Um, I just like to say, you know, even though there are some people out there that don't have mothers, there's always somebody in your life that will always be a mother. I had my mother, my grandmother, and my great-grandma that just recently passed away. Each one of them were like a mother to me, especially my great-grandma. She was the one that was always full of life, you know, running around with us along with everybody else and it just seems like almost all the good people that you've loved go away but honestly they're never they're never away they just went home and sooner or later we will all be with our family Six, seven months? Uh, almost a year. Almost a year, yeah. Almost a year, isn't that something? Yeah. Wow. Like I'm getting old. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's fabulous. Uh, he got baptized in the service, and his wife got baptized in the service. They didn't come here expecting to get baptized, but they got baptized and both got filled right. with the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking another tongue Amen. in this church on that day. Amen. 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 So that's awesome. Okay. Uh, here's what we're going to do now. Uh, can our brother Cook come up here for a minute? Now I'm going to let him close it out. Brother, you can come on up. What I was trying to say in everything that we talked about is that there's a connection in, you know, moms and sons and daughters that Sometimes I don't think we see. Uh, and God makes provision for the sons and daughters of mothers. Amen. And uh, I, I, wanna, I just want to share one with you real quick. And this is mine. Uh, my mom always prayed for me. And I, I felt like I was uh, running on my mom's prayers because I wasn't serving God. But I knew that her prayers were worthy and that God heard them. And that uh, she really kept me together and kept me out of trouble a lot of times just because of God's divine intervention and with her prayers. Uh, she really blessed me and my wife in our early marriage with prayers. She would never, ever let us leave the house without praying for us or with us. Never. Uh, am I right? Uh, she would always come out to the car to bless us and pray for us, regardless of the weather or the temperature. She always came out and prayed. Uh, even though I wasn't living right, she was a praying mom. And uh, she was always a helper. And whatever the need was in our early marriage, mom was always there to help. Uh, however in, uh, she could, encouraging and uplifting uh, and all of those things. And many times I would tell mom about my plans, things that I was going to go do. And she would always correct me and say, never say that you're going to go do anything. Always end it with Lord willing. Uh, and I learned to do that, uh, you know. I'm going to play golf on Sunday in Upper Michigan, Lord willing. Uh, it, it's really up to the Lord if, if you make it to that day. Uh, who knows for tomorrow that I'm here today. Amen? Amen. And uh, 
on June the 8th of 2012, I lived in Florida, and the Lord was working to bring me back home. I'd been away for a lot of years. Of course, I'm not God, but God saw things that I had no idea or clue were coming. This is that connection I'm talking about that God has with his people, uh, his mothers and children. And uh, I arrived here back in Ohio. Uh, I call it home because I was born and raised here. And uh, the Lord brought me back through circumstances. And it was the beginning of, you know, me searching for truth, searching for God. And uh, I was very sick, and God healed me of a disease, and I knew he was doing it. And he brought me back here on uh, June 8th of 2012. Uh, I did not know. But on July 8th of 2012, the Lord was going to take my mom home. So I got to be home with my mom for 30 days. And I did something with my mom that I had never, ever done before. And I didn't realize it until mom was gone. And years later, the Lord reminded me. I took my mom to eat, out to eat, had a good time. And, uh, she loved casinos, to eat at casinos because of the buffet and shrimp and all this kind of stuff. And I took her to eat, just me and mom. Not my wife, not my kids. What I didn't know is that I had never, ever, as an adult, ever took my mom out to eat by myself. Always had my wife, my kids, my sister, my brother. I never got to spend that kind of time with my mom. But God knew this and saw all this and didn't show it to me till later, but he took her 30 days after I got home. And literally seven days before she passed, she had a conversation with my sister and said this. She said, if the Lord called me home, I've had the most wonderful and happiest time in my whole life because I went out to eat by myself with my son. Amen. Seven days later, she was gone. Cherish your mothers. Amen. You never know. You never know when he's going to take them home. That's right. Look deep inside. Because there's a love in a mother that you'll never experience when they're gone. Amen. And then I was refreshed after the Lord had shared this with me because I realized I do have a mother now. And I don't want to get into it, but Paul talks about it in Romans. And it's the church. That's right. The church is my mother now. Amen? Amen. That's my story about my mom. Amen. All right, I'm going to hand it over to Brother here. He's going to have a few things to talk about here, and then we'll go downstairs and eat. Amen. 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 And before we do that, I'm sorry. <laughs> There's gifts up here for the mothers. All the mothers, come on up here. All mothers, stepmothers, come on up. Grandmothers, whatever mothers, come on up. My wife went out and bought some things, and uh, it's not much. They probably range, you know, 15 bucks, 12 bucks, but. Uh, go ahead and pick one out. Everybody grab one, and it's our gift from the church to you guys. And uh, use it. Amen. Amen. It's like shopping, girls. <laughs> Emily, you're special. My wife said. If I was going to get one, that's the one I would say. You could get this. I told him, I go, okay, let's just go first. Oh, my God. It's funny, but yeah, that's the next one. Amen. All right. Did everybody get one? Yes. Mr. Becca. And uh, get one for Kelly, brother. And get one for Sister Brenda. Amen. Amen. Becca, got one. 
Get two of one for Brenda and Amen. Happy Mother's Day. Amen. Yes. Praise God. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. In the Lord, great. Yeah. There's been such a special presence of God in this place today. From the very beginning. Amen. There's so much you can say about a mother. That I don't even know where to start. Brother Alex knows. He turned me loose with the mic. He said, 10 minutes, brother. Seven to 10, brother. Well, I got my wife there. She's the backup. You know, from the very beginning, God created man and wife, or man and woman, even. He said, uh, it's not good that man should be alone. But I'm going to make him a help me. And I thought, what's the Lord thinking here? We need help? All the women's done yes, brother. He gave us a woman to help us out. Amen. They're, they're, they're more than a help me. They're a companion. Yeah. Lifelong companion. Uh, they mean more to us than anything else in the world other than God. And I believe that's why God has used marriage as an illustration of his relationship with mankind. I don't think there's any better illustration he could have used. And he even went so far as to call himself the bridegroom and to call the church his bride. That's probably one of the greatest times of our lives is when we get married. Uh, it's a special time. And when a man and a woman decide to get that's a special, you have found someone special in your life. You want to spend the rest of your life together. And then when you have kids, it's just that much more special. It really gives meaning to life. Amen. Without a family, without a wife or a husband, life really doesn't have much meaning. It makes you complete. It makes you feel whole. It gives you a purpose. They're always an encouragement. You know, I've heard it said that behind every successful man is a woman. They provide something in a relationship that nothing else can do. Nothing else can take the place of a wife in a relationship. I know that I could talk about all the different women in the Bible. I think my favorite one is Ruth. Anybody ever read the book of Ruth? Yeah. How many here have read the book of Ruth? If you haven't read it, you need to read that. Now, I love reading about Esther and her special relationship with the king. And she was his bride. I could talk about Rebecca. I could talk about Mary. Not only is Mary the mother of 
of Jesus, but Mary and Martha. The Mary there, the one that chose to sit at the feet of Jesus. But what really made them special? You know, women are, are beautiful. They're attractive. But what really makes a woman special? What really, and you can talk about Hannah and Elizabeth. I mean, there's so many uh, women that the Bible brought out. And, and he does that for a reason. God didn't just put these names in there. They were put in there because of the quality that they had. Women possess a quality that men don't possess. But Ruth had a special quality. She was the daughter-in-law of a, one of Naomi's sons. She had two daughters-in-law. When her sons died and the famine was over, she only went into the land of Moab because of the famine and only wanted to stay just a short time. But during that time, her sons died, and so she came back to the land of Israel. And she told her daughters, she gave them a choice. You know, uh, my family is not like your family. Well, that's a perfect illustration of, the, of Christianity. But Ruth said some immortal words there. The one daughter chose to go back to the family of her birth her natural family and live with not Ruth. Ruth said this, your people will be my people. Yep. Where you lodge, that's where I'm going to lodge. Yep. And where you die, that's what I'm, where I'm going to die. And she made this special relationship. She said your God is not going to be my God. The Moabites were all idol worshipers. They did not know the true and living God. Just like many people in the world today, they don't know who God really is. But they have a desire to know God. But you got to be like Ruth. You got to have the heart that Ruth had. Your people are going to be my people. Your family is going to be my family. Your God is going to be my God. She saw something in Ruth or Naomi that nobody else saw. she stepped out not having any promise of anything else. No, no future family. No nothing. And she followed Ruth back to Israel. But God had other plans for Ruth. She ended up marrying man by the name of Boaz. He was a wealthy man. And later on, they got married. And her son, their son, they had a son by the name of Jesse. And Jesse, later on, had a son named David who was to become the king of Israel. Ruth became the great-grandmother 
of David. Who later on, down the line, down through the lineage of Ruth and Boaz, Jesus was born, our Savior. What a blessing that Ruth received by making the greatest decision that she ever made in her life. God told Abraham, I want to make a covenant with you. He said, come out of your land. Out from among your people out from among your family and go where I tell you to go. And I'm going to bless you and make you a father of many nations when he didn't even have a son. Today we have the same opportunity You're not here by accident. Nobody is here by accident. When they come through those doors, they're here because God has brought them here for a reason. True. Amen. I used to believe that things happen by accident or coincidence. But that wasn't true. Everything that happens in your life is orchestrated by God. <clears throat> he knows what you need. And He knows where you can find true joy and peace and satisfaction. Yes. The first thing that I really ever noticed about apostolics when I was just searching for God, Lord led me to an apostolic used to be a buddy of mine, an old beer drinking buddy. When he came into the church, he came into the church about six months earlier than I did. Had a lot more knowledge than I did about the Bible. And I listened to him. And everything he said made sense. The truth always makes sense. So when I started searching for God, I wasn't searching for a denomination. I was searching for truth. The Bible says the truth shall set you free. Too many people today are not looking for appreciate what Sister Emily <coughs> had to say about I'm looking for truth. Jesus said he that hungered and thirst, thirsted after righteousness shall be filled. If you're looking for truth you'll find it. God will make a way for you to find that and he will open your eyes give you understanding and wisdom and knowledge that you never had. <clears throat> so as much as I would love to magnify our ladies and you can say so much Actually, I'll tell you this. As Brother Alex was talking, I went to a funeral one time. Never thought about this or ever looked at it this way before. And as we were leaving the funeral home to go to the gravesite, I told Brother Alex, I said, you know, it's really odd. 
people receive the greatest honor on the day of their death that they do their whole life. They stop traffic for you. It doesn't matter who you are. But they stop traffic for you. They honor you. All your friends and your family are there to honor you. You will never receive more honor than on your day. Not your birthday so much day you were born, but it's the day you die. You will receive more honor then than you ever will in your whole life. And it's a crying shame that we don't take more time to honor those that we love while they're alive. Amen. We need to appreciate
That's what God wants for everybody. God wants you to become part of His bride. That's the reason you're here today. Right. God loves you. You're special to God. You know, that's what made me really love God the most. I think more than anything was He made me feel special. Like I was more important than anybody else in the world. Maybe think about that. All the billions of people in the world today, and He took time out to speak to me. That's right. He took time out to listen to my prayer. To answer my prayer. So we need to give him some special Amen, brother. consideration this morning. We have opportunities to love him. We have opportunities to worship him. We have opportunities to pray. Amen. And this is your opportunity, right? Amen. Hallelujah. This can be actually the first day of your life. Jesus told Nicodemus, he said, except a man born again of the water and of the spirit you cannot enter or even see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus being an old man said this, how can I an old man enter back into my mother's womb and be born again? It's not a natural birth. This is a spiritual birth. And it's just as real as the one you experienced when you came out of your mother. Amen, brother. That's the truth. Has all the power in the world to change your life forever. To give you hope satisfaction, joy, peace, and love that you never experienced in your life. He wants to be the father that you never knew or that you've always wanted. The friend maybe you've never had. A friend that sticks closer than a brother. down and pray and God puts his big loving arm around you. Right. He's your healer. He's your deliverer. And thank God he's became my Savior. Amen. Amen. So we got time before we go down and fellowship today and have some to take a few minutes. Amen. Maybe you're not used to pray. Neither was I. I didn't know how to pray. The only thing I knew how to pray was thank you Lord for this food. Now I'll leave you down to sleep. First prayer I ever memorized. I pray the Lord my soul if I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. It's only prayer I ever knew. God's looking for a deeper, more meaningful.
why he holds the prayer of repentance so special. He wants you to be part of him. He's saying, I want you to be my bride. And it's not hard. It's easy. Thank God he made things easy. He didn't make it complicated. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to understand or to know what about God. All you have to have is a desire and a willingness. Say, God, I need you, God. God wants to become part of your life. I get down every day and tell God how much I love you. step out of the pew and walk down an a aisle which seemed like two miles long. It felt like the spotlight was on me. You know what it is? You know when a bride walks in the door, where's the spotlight? Huh? Got the bride waiting, her bridegroom waiting up here. And all of a sudden, when that door's open and the bride walks in, everybody, everybody stands up and turns. They don't look at her with a critical glare, trying to put a spotlight on her magnifying glass. No, they're happy for her. They know what's going to transpire. That's the same thing happens. Same thing happens. You're standing back here in the pew. It's just you and God. You say, God, I want this. It's like when he says, will you become my wife? And you say, I will. I do. Well, he's already got the ring. He's just waiting. Tomorrow never seems to come. You'll never feel ready. 
You'll never feel like you're everything God wants you to be when you come to an altar or you come. I don't think a wife ever gives that a thought. I don't think she thinks she's unworthy. All she knows is God loves her. That man loves her and he wants her to be his wife. And he don't care about anything else. That's right. So don't put him off today. We got people here that will pray with you. We love you. Sing it. 